This is the fourth in a series of videos designed to teach the basics of CSS. If you are new to CSS and have not yet watched the first three videos in this series, then you might want to go back and watch those videos before watching this one. This video will describe how to position elements. I'll start by going to littlewebhut.com and I'll click on the CSS tab. Next I'll find the link for the position property and click on that. This page describes four different methods for positioning elements. They are static, relative, absolute, and fixed. This fifth keyword, inherit, just means to use the same positioning method as the parent element uses. This keywords section down here has a good description of these different positioning methods. You might want to come back to this section after watching this video to reinforce what you've learned. Let's look at an example that uses all four of these methods. I'll click here on the test button. And now I'll press the view button to display this example. For this example, there are four div elements that we can see right here. And each of these div elements contain a P element and an H1 element. We are going to apply our positioning styles to these P elements. Each of the P elements has a different ID value so that each of the P elements can be positioned using a different positioning method. The first P element, with the ID attribute set to TST1, will use this style right here where the position is set to static. The second element has its ID attribute set to TST2, so this is the style that will be applied to that element, and here position is set to relative, and then the third will be positioned using absolute, and the fourth P element will be positioned using fixed positioning. So here is our first P element that uses static positioning, and here is the text down here in the example. The static positioning method allows the browser to automatically lay out the element according to normal flow. Normal flow lays out elements in the order that they appear in the HTML code. So, for instance, inline elements are placed on the same line until the line runs out of room, in which case a new line is started underneath. And then block elements, like this P element here, begin and end with a line break and occupy the full width of the line. This is basically the default behavior of a browser. This P element here was positioned using relative positioning. The relative positioning method allows the element to be positioned with an offset from its normal flow position. The top, right, bottom, and left properties are used to set the offsets. So here in the style, we can see that top is set to 20 pixels, and left is set to 50 pixels. So looking at this previous P element, you can see where the normal flow position would be. And then on this example right here for relative positioning, we can see that we're down 20 pixels lower than it would have been for normal flow positioning. And we're also positioned from the left side 50 pixels from where the normal flow position would have been. This next element down here uses absolute positioning. This method allows the element to be positioned at an absolute position relative to its containing block. So to use absolute positioning, it's important to understand what the containing block is. The containing block is the nearest ancestor element whose position property is set to relative, absolute, or fixed. You can find this definition of a containing block back on our previous page. Here it is right here. So again, the containing block is the nearest ancestor element that has its position property set to relative, absolute, or fixed. So back to our example, here is our P element. The closest ancestor element 
is the div element here since it contains the p element. So we need to determine if this div element is set to relative, absolute, or fixed. So if we go up to the top here, we can see that we have a style that sets position to relative for all div elements. So since the div element uses relative positioning and the div element is the ancestor of the p element, the div element is considered the containing block of the p element. You'll notice also that for the div element, the background color here is set to a color of lime. And that lets us see what the limits are of the div element. So right here, we can see that for this div element, this is the top of the box here, which is lime, and this is the bottom of the box. For this absolutely positioned P element here, we see that we have the top property set to 30 pixels and the left property set to 20 pixels. So we can see here that we have this text right here from the P element positioned 30 pixels below the top of the div element and 20 pixels from the left side. So what would happen if this div element here didn't have its position property set to relative? Well, let's go up and try that. So right here for position relative, I'm just going to delete that. And now when I press the view button, we can see that this absolutely positioned P element has disappeared from this section down here and it's now located up here. And this is because this P element is no longer located with reference to that div element. So what is the P element using now for its reference? If there are no other ancestor elements that have a position value of relative, absolute, or fixed, then the reference will be the page origin. So now let's go down and look at our last P element here that we have positioned using fixed positioning. The fixed positioning method allows the element to be positioned at a fixed location relative to the browser window. When this positioning method is used, the position of the element does not change even when the browser window is scrolled. For this example, the top property is set to 325 pixels and the left property is set to 60 pixels. Here is the top of our browser window right here. So you'll see that this text within the P element is located 325 pixels below the top of this window here. And it's also located 60 pixels from the left side of this browser window. And now if you watch this text while I scroll the window, you'll see that it stays fixed even when I'm scrolling. And I can scroll from left to right also and this text will stay in a fixed position. Well, that summarizes these four positioning methods and concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.